Hi, so today we're gonna do a get ready with me. This is Taco, he's a sweetie. You'll be seeing a lot more of him. I'm gonna start off with sunscreen first. This is actually like a new find for me. This is from Ultraviolet and it's their Lean Screen Mineral Mattifying Fragrance Free Sunscreen. The packaging is really, really cute and also it's just a really, really nice consistency. Oh my god, why do I look like a Mormon today? It's a mineral sunscreen that's a little bit more skin tone based and for some reason it blends in very very well to the skin and it does a really good job of mattifying my skin so no complaints so far i really enjoy it it is a thicker kind of consistency but i don't find that it's tacky or that it feels heavy on the skin so i'm a big fan i am for the most part all settled in funny enough i've actually stayed here for a less amount of time than the penthouse but i already feel way more at home and um, I'm a lot happier. I'm also going to be applying some primer. This is the Photo Finish Vitamin Glow Primer from Smashbox. So yeah, by the way, I've also been a little bit more experimental with my makeup and just kind of having fun now that we can kind of go out and enjoy ourselves. And therefore, I've just been kind of dressing up more and just kind of um, redefining my style and figuring out what I like now post-pandemic as a mid-twenties person. Surprise, surprise! A lot of things are different now. I've definitely grown out of um, several things and I just understand that like even though these um, pieces of clothing are objectively beautiful, it's just not something that I would feel comfortable wearing. Like when I wear an especially like feminine dress or um, something that I know is trendy and looks good but doesn't feel quite me, um, I do feel like I'm putting on drag. I feel like I'm wearing a costume and I don't feel as comfortable and I'm more conscious of what I'm wearing. And I feel like I've reached this point in my life where I don't need to feel that way. Also because, I mean, when you move twice in, in the span of 12 months, you start to realise actually a lot of these things I don't really use and and could go to a better home and basically I could get rid of and wouldn't think about it and wouldn't miss it. Especially when it's things that are like duplicates or um, it's just things that you've kind of grown out of and you're just keeping for sentimental value. So I am a very, very sentimental person and I, I tend to hold on to a lot of things that I used to love. But over these past few months, I've really just learned how to narrow um, what I have down to just the A-listers as I like to call them. And I've also been consuming and um, watching a lot more content about like conscious consumerism so still having stuff and not quite minimalism but just not feeling like you have to buy things to fill up space and to keep stuff and I've just really been enjoying having more space in general. This entire thing came out of necessity because like I said I was moving from 1,500 square feet to less than 500 um, but I have never felt better. I think getting rid of the furniture that no longer serves me that I had no use for, um, clothes that I've grown out of and just um, hobbies or things that I just like don't reach for and I don't need to keep with me. Like decluttering all these things really help to streamline how I see my life and what I want my life to look like and to only use and wear things that I'm truly very excited about. So I don't know, I just feel like my life is a lot more like high quality now and I feel a lot better and um, I've just been kind of enjoying having everything within reach now. And it also frees up space to have new things in your life. Like if I'm really excited about something new and I want to, you know, have a space dedicated for it, I can. So recently I've been also very into crocheting. I know, I'm just a grandma now. Everyone's laughing at me because they're like, what is Brenda doing? Like I've begun to notice that like I keep all these things that I find very precious and I love them and then I either kind of grow out of them before I get to enjoy them or they expire or they're just not as cute anymore so I've just been you know having having a good time with my products so I've been using this foundation combo that I really really like this is Sephora's best skin ever in the original matte version so they also have a glowy version but I prefer the matte one and then the hourglass ambient soft glow foundation this soft glow foundation is in shade 2 and this best skin ever from Sephora is in 24N so definitely a big color difference if you can see which is why I like to mix them both because it will always suit my skin no matter 
what it looks like that day just because I'm able to mix it myself. So yeah, I've just really been enjoying having things within reach and being able to furnish an entire home um, with the things that I love without having to like kind of sparse them out and just always having the house look incomplete. I think for the most part, the house is quite complete already. And uh, I'm just working on tweaks and ways to beautify it. And because I have a lot less stuff now, I'm able to find the stuff that I need a lot quicker. And um, because I have literally just placed them in their homes, uh, for some reason, like, like I said, I don't know if I mentioned this in a previous video, I think I did, but everything just seems to fit better in this space. Like, even though it's a much smaller space, the amount of storage that I have and where the things are it just makes a lot more sense for me and i'm like truly feeling much more settled and happy in this space so that's kind of where i've been at now and um from when i stopped working in july um i then moved and then i went on a trip to vietnam um travel guide available if you need it since then honestly i have been kind of gearing myself up to work again but I've just been so overwhelmed and so intimidated by my own expectations and how I want to approach content creation now. I've always had this problem right I feel like I've mentioned this for years now but like I always want to bring value to what I can create so I'm always trying to find ways to to add value to the content and not add to the noise but at the same time be entertaining and be consistent so I'm really struggling with um, my own expectations of how I would like my content to look and uh, how motivated I actually am to see it through. So I think I've been enjoying not having that expectation to create content because it's always on my mind. Like before I took the break, it was literally on and on and on. I have my hangups about the industry, about the nature of content creation and the nature of content that exists out there in the world right now, but also um, recognizing that I am part of the ecosystem and how can I change the tone of it to, to something that I feel like would be adding value and would be creative and artistic and, and fun. I've just been taking a longer break than expected and I've just been taking things extra slow. Also because I have been distracted, lah, you know, getting into a new relationship and having a completely new environment. Um, it feels great to start fresh. My partner is truly the best and I'm just so happy with her that I've just been kind of like living in domestic bliss and uh, I've just really been enjoying whatever time that I have, trying to think about what else I want to do because over this break where I've not worked, I have done a lot of other things that made me feel like I've grown a lot more as a person than I ever have in the past few years, um, unfortunately. And I'm going to be talking more about this in an upcoming episode of Growing Pains. We're coming back and um, I'm going to be switching up the layout a little bit just so that I can make it a little bit more approachable and I wouldn't be um, as intimidated to create another episode because usually like each episode is, is quite high production and I need to like invite a guest and have a conversation but hopefully you guys will you know be open to the idea of just having a conversation with me like how we do like chatty get ready with me and having it a little bit more topic centric so that's kind of the direction that growing pains will grow in and uh, I'm really really excited about it but it's just a bunch of other things that I feel like are holding me back or that I'm kind of waiting on or that I'm I'm just dragging my feet on so hopefully now that I have fucking mentioned this to you guys that you guys can keep me accountable and um, have something to look forward to also and I guess I want to also share what I've been doing over my break growing as a person like I said outside of work so I've been doing a lot more pottery I'm trying very hard to get better at it and hopefully able to um, make a business out of it because I really really love pottery so much and it's just something that makes me really happy and if all jobs paid the same honestly I think I would just be a ceramicist and just make dining wear, make beautiful things for people to keep in their homes and experiment with glaze and experiment with form and I just find it so fulfilling and so satisfying and it teaches me a lot about like patience and um, being not so precious about your art and, and stuff like that. I think inherently I'm just like someone who loves working with materials. I'm actually gonna use this, it's from Colourpop, it's called Rum Runner. This cream blush is so much better than their cheap dew. 
Oh my god, can I say, do not ever get these cheap dues. I have maybe like six or seven of them and they all separate and they're very, very difficult to apply and I usually have to squeeze them onto a tissue to get rid of the excess oil and then dab it on and it leaves like a, a very tacky and glossy residue and it doesn't sink in. These like um, cream blush sticks, they're so, so much better. So don't make the mistake that I did. Mm -mm -mm. But yeah, I've really been enjoying pottery and um, at this point I am self-taught. So like I took um, a 10 week lesson with the 8th floor and I'm still there. I'm doing the independent hours, uh, but there's no guidance. So it's a lot of me just like watching YouTube videos and watching technique and having trial and error. Uh, besides that, like I said, I've also done crocheting. So it's actually a really funny story. It's quite a recent hobby. Um, so my partner's friend's mom invited us over to her house to basically teach us how to crochet. And it's the same story as Paul. Like when I went there, I could not understand what she was talking about and how to even do like a slip knot. A slip knot is literally one of the easiest knots you could do. And I just, I couldn't understand like where her hands were. And I'm left-handed, so I'm always acutely aware when I do anything with my hands that everyone's doing it with their right hand. And I basically either have to flip the image over in my brain to do it on the left, or I have to just follow with my right hand. So um, I tried for a while to do it on my left but then I gave up because it was just really really hard and um, I'm basically using my right hand to crochet and I just couldn't get it like a lot of it's like about tension and holding and about how you basically pull the hook out and having that consistency I didn't get it and I was actually in a group of like four or five people I was one of the worst um, even though my partner had been like oh yeah Brenda's very good and very crafty like she's gonna get it so much faster no it was very embarrassing I, I sucked I just felt very unsatisfied like I just still I wanted to know how to do it properly like, I went back and I bought my own yarn on Shopee <laughs> And once it got delivered in like maybe two weeks later, I started to learn how to crochet and just doing rows. And um, I found that I really, really enjoy it because none of you guys will be surprised to know this, but I have anxiety and I fidget and I also have very ADHD tendencies. So um, actually crocheting really, really helps with my anxiety and with like this, this tendency to fidget. And I'm going to be traveling a lot in this upcoming two months. So I wanted to do something on the plane also because I am also claustrophobic. I know, it just I'm just a problematic, sensitive gal. I just was like, okay, I need something to do that I need like, you know, something to occupy my time with and this is really great and this is easy to bring along. And um, I started to realize that you can actually make a lot of things with crochet. Like you can make your own bags, um, you could make your like own laptop sleeves, phone covers, card holders, clothes, like hats, like, you know, it doesn't always have to be a scarf. It could be a baby blanket. I could make noodles and taco like little clothes. So I started getting really excited about like just the different materials of yarn and like the different weights and the different types of crochet hooks and I, no pun intended, got hooked. Crocheting is a very accessible hobby to get into. So that's another thing that I really like about it. Pottery and pole, my two other hobbies, they can get expensive and they can get very specialized and to be able to buy like heels for pole and like clay and like the different equipment, all of it's quite specialized and it's not super accessible. So you either have to go to a studio or buy very expensive equipment to train on your own. And I just feel like crocheting is... It's so easy, you can buy a hook for $2 at Daiso, even cheaper on Shopee, and then you can just like try your hand at different um, stitch methods and different things that you can whip up. And once you get the basics of it, you can basically design your own stuff and then um, just yeah, start creating your own little pieces, which to me is very, very exciting. So yeah, and you can do it from the comfort of your own home, anywhere. And sometimes like just having something tactile and just forcing yourself to focus on your stitches can kind of help mellow your thoughts out, especially if you have anxiety or if you have a tendency to overthink or if you're very stressed. And I've always been interested in knitting when I was like in secondary school, but I never like finished it. So it's just really fun to, to get started on new crocheting projects and actually finish it and actually getting to wear it and to use it and to show it off. It trains your dexterity and it trains your patience also. Like I don't know how many times I've unraveled something and just started over again and my partner's like, oh my god, do you get frustrated? I'm like, no, it's just a learning experience. It's 
it's just because you know the second time is going to be better so you just do it anyway and um yeah i've just been really enjoying crocheting and doing that and oh speaking about pole i think some of you guys did wonder if i was still doing pole um basically long story short i injured myself right with with my neck i also had a lot of stress on my like right shoulder cuff and also my left wrist so then i took a little bit of a break and once you take a break from something that is like a physical hobby you definitely do backslide a little bit and you can feel like you weren't as good as you used to be when i felt that i definitely was a bit more disheartened um but i've just come to the conclusion that maybe I'm not like a trick scale. Like, you have like that exotic dance style, you have so many other styles, and then you also have like the acrobatic, like gymnast, you know, type of tricks on the pole. And uh, for me, like, I enjoy tricks also, but that's not something that I would train very hard for and I would do all of the time. Like, I much prefer dancing and being part of the flow and it's also way less injury prone so i'm gonna use this it's been a while since i've used this it's called the cleo pro eye palette it's called interlace it's really really nice like the way that these colors are set it's very neutral and it's just very beautiful so i'm gonna do that so yeah ever since i've kind of made my peace with it and you know, funny enough, like not everyone feels the same way. So like my best friend Anita and I, we both started pole at the same time. We both kind of got injured around the same time and we both kind of stopped around the same time. Um, but now that she's getting back into it, she has come to the conclusion that dancing is just not for her. She's a tricks person. She enjoys like the finesse of doing tricks and she doesn't follow like dance choreography quite as well. And for me, I'm the exact opposite. I follow the choreography. I like the choreography. Um, I I feel sexy i feel good but tricks i feel weak and i just like there's just certain things like my back flexibility is just not very good so once you get to a certain point like you will need your back flexibility for a lot of things and it fucking hurts by the way tricks woo, the bruises woo, it really hurts so for me it's like i i want to dance and look sexy and i don't want it to hurt and she's like i i don't look sexy when i dance so i don't want to dance i want to do tricks like tricks is how she feels sexy so then we've just kind of like branched out and have been doing our own thing and also exploring other hobbies so me and anita we've also been climbing a lot more besides you know pursuing my own hobbies i've also just been exploring the country more and i know that sounds really really lame but my partner and i have just been exploring more places on our own she's very adventurous so she's been taking me out on more like fun dates and like showing me her favorite haunts and i've kind of been doing the same i showed her where i used to live she showed me where she used to live like just been kind of seeing a different side of Singapore in a more deeply personal way and that's also been really really fun and I think this is one thing that I really really appreciate about her is that she doesn't seem to mind the trouble like of traveling of like bringing the dogs with us and like going to different places to have an experience like she's someone that will shall we go like let's go and for me i'm like ah oh, but it's so far out like mm, like i mean we just go somewhere near you know that kind of thing just out of habit and because that's how i've operated most of my life previously but you know it's nice like we take the dogs out on walks in different parks different bodies of water um, we go exploring to different places we drive down Bukit Brown at night just to see like we drive all the way out Changi like just different places in general and you know what I've also been I'm just telling you guys all the things that I've been doing lately I've also been um, looking around at property someone else is buying but we just go along because they need our opinion and um my god property prices are insane there oh my god like the places that i didn't even consider maybe two three years ago when i was considering buying versus now it's like a jump of like 150 to 200 thousand dollars which is shocking and if you know anything about the rental market most rental prices have gone up by 40 percent that's the market standard now i'm shocked i'm screaming i'm crying i'm throwing up i'm very lucky that my landlord for this place is actually really really good and he didn't increase the price that much now, i just can't believe that a shoebox apartment 400 square feet one bedroom if any 
cost the same amount as the penthouse did for me just a year ago. 400 square feet, 1,500 square feet, same location. Shocking. Shocking. Also check out this eyeshadow trio. It's called Kaja. It gives like the most beautiful, expensive, sleek glitter. I really like this colour especially. I'm not one for pink, like if you know me, I'm, I don't really care for pink. But this is like a beautiful icy pink with silver. And then this is kind of like a warm starlight, like in between gold and silver sort of colour, which is really, really beautiful. And then the last colour is this really nice plum. I've never actually used a plum before, let me just try to use it a little bit. It gives a very smoky kind of look. Maybe I wouldn't apply it with my fingers and I would just gently tap it on with a brush, but since we're already here, I might as well just like top it up a bit. Yeah, so that's what I've been doing, gawking at prices, complaining about real estate, and then just doing my little hobbies and um, feeling a little bit lost. Yeah, I think being in your mid-twenties can feel a little bit lonely. There are a lot of people that I think about and I'm like, yeah, I should probably reach out. But then I know that I cannot follow through and I know that it's because I'm traveling and because I'm busy, like I don't even know if I'm able to find a time to meet them to hang out. And then I'm just like, ah, never lah. So then there are a lot of people on my mind that I just like want to reach out to that I just feel like there's no point. And I've also just been kind of feeling... A little bit stale like uh, what else can i do with my job especially because it's not linear career progression wise like I, I don't have very much you know so i'm just still kind of figuring stuff out along the way trying to do something fresh and something new but also just getting a little bit jaded in general and i know i'm not the only one who feels that way because like i um met a couple of my other creative friends uh now that you know events are back on and i, I do get to see them which is really nice and i think a lot of them are kind of feeling the same way and they're kind of feeling a little bit tired and um just the the move towards like short form content i don't consume short form content i don't actually use tiktok especially these days especially with all of my like pottery and crochet and all this kind of stuff i still find myself if i have any time at all looking at long form content i still enjoy youtube videos i like being able to turn on a long video and just shower or eat or do my own thing or crochet and just listen to someone talk and if you're watching this up until this point i i know you feel the same way and it's just really sad because like my favorite youtubers are all quitting <laughs> they're all leaving and they're all like ah this is because it it no longer brings in the same amount of viewership and short form content and like tiktok is where all the fuss is and it drives like the highest roi so like all the companies are obviously like gravitating towards that and i feel this pressure to also keep up and to also start doing tiktok content but i just don't feel motivated because i don't feel like there's enough time for me to talk <laughs> there's enough time for me to be um, to, to form a connection with my audience and to be able to um, share something more valuable, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Fuck. I just basically feel like a lot of TikTok content can be quite circular and when you prioritize virality and when you prioritize having someone's attention for that short amount of time and you know one where you cannot skip forward and you have to watch through the whole thing, then the nature of content becomes different. And uh, that's not the kind of content that I value or that I watch and I consume. I don't feel confident being able to make the same kind of content that I do here on TikTok. I know I should try, at least. I am going to. Um, I, I have some ideas and I'm really excited. For someone who talks a lot and for someone who just prefers having a sincere sit-down kind of conversation other than showing you all these very cool, exciting things, It's it's been a little bit more intimidating and a little bit more... Um, frustrating for me lah. Did that eyeshadow do anything to my face? I just feel like it just made me kind of like smoky, which is nice. Um, I might then just darken up the crease and, and make it a little bit more smoky. I didn't intend to go smoky, but here we are. So maybe you guys can help me out. Maybe you guys can tell me like what are some of your favorite TikTok or Reels creators and what you like about them so that I can maybe also learn how to appreciate it. Because maybe because I don't use TikTok, my algorithm is just not for me. And I don't find 
any value from it because it's not catered to me and not catered to my likes and I don't stay on it long enough to be able to figure that out so that could be a me problem like if you have um, any creators that you really enjoy and that you really have a connection with and who shares important stuff you know to you like you can let me know on tiktok i know that i like seeing um specific like therapist stuff like you know like red flags green flags like how some people are how to work something out like especially when it came to like dating and relationships when i was still dating that was quite helpful and um i really really enjoyed those and i also enjoy like useless farm you know like that emu that karen emu that's always trying to kill the lady with the lip filler and the lashes like those are just funny, but again, they kind they kind of get a little bit like repetitive, so I don't watch it all the time. Oh, I've also been <laughs> I've also been really enjoying crocheting TikToks. They are fast enough to show you the final product, but then again, they don't teach you how to crochet those things. So then I'm still going onto YouTube to be able to learn how to crochet properly. And but I feel like I've talked about this to my partner and to my best friend and. Uh, to other creators also enough for me to be like you know what I just need to fucking do it like it doesn't have to be perfect it needs to be done it's like a, a form of like writer's block like a creative block I guess like I'm I'm just dreading it because it's a new learning curve for me and I definitely still have a bit of resistance towards it um, that's my own personal bias and then also I'm just worried that it's not gonna do well and let me comb out my lashes I feel like I've been here forever um, let me just take this kaja. I'll take the top lightest colour and just dab it. Like the most sparse little dab dab dab. You can barely see it to be honest. But I kind of like that it's so barely there. Ooh, pretty. Okay, let me line my eyes. I am using the 1028 Ultra Precision Lasting Eyeliner. It's a Taiwanese brand, I think. It's actually pretty good, you know? Like, it's very affordable also. It gives you a really good, very sleek, thin line. So yeah, I guess that's the long story version of why I haven't been posting as much or I haven't been on social media as much. Uh, firstly, because I've just been more... Um, actively involved in in my life outside of social media and I've just been a lot more present which is really great for my personal life but maybe not so good for my career let me just apply a bit more blush because I feel like it's it's left the building and I've also just been kind of rethinking my entire life um, thinking okay is this where I want to be is this uh, where I want to sink my roots in um, location wise, direction wise, career wise, if I want to stay doing what I do, like how can I do better and how can I make sure that I still make it fun and interesting for myself. Just a rethinking of like, okay, what am I doing all of this for? Actually, I'm gonna use brow gel to kind of keep my hairs, my brow hairs out of the way. So it's a weird place to be in. I am simultaneously the happiest I've ever been. But also just kind of like something's off. <laughs> I'm still feeling a little unsettled. Going to be setting my face with the Airbrush Brightening Finish by Charlotte Tilbury. Yeah, but I feel confident that like, you know, once I've aired my grievances and I've, you know, spoken to more people about it and just kind of processed it on my own that I will be able to come back and I will be able to do better and be more proud of the things that I come up with and to be more excited about what I choose to create and at the end of the day like I still love my job and I'm very thankful to have it no one's got their shit figured out right so I'm sure that everyone can kind of like understand where I'm coming from too let me do my lips oh wait 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 okay I want to contour myself with the soft scalp the gradient contour by abduct cosmetics this sponge by the way is also from abduct cosmetics it's great and they have like the most beautiful, cool toned contour that is perfect. Let me just do a quick little nose contour. Sometimes I do this right before my eyeshadow as well in the crease just to give the most natural crease. I don't even consider it as eyeshadow but just introducing shadows back into my face. That being said, all of these existential crises that I've been telling you that I've been having um, have come up like a little bit later and I'm glad that it's come up because now that I I can articulate it, I can fully process it and rationalize it and really acknowledge how I feel about it and not 
keep it under the rug because I kind of don't have the time to deal with it. I've also been able to process a lot of the other things that I've learned during my break and um, how I've grown as a person, how I see my life and how I want it to turn out. It's like decluttering, right? Once you declutter your stuff, then you have a better sense of, okay, what's important to me? What's left on the table? And how do I want to organize it? What do I want to prioritize? And like, what truly makes me happy? In a weird way, um, post, you know, breakup, moving out and Essentially, my life is very different from how it used to be at the start of the year. I've really begun to understand myself in this moment a lot better. Um, I don't know about you, but sometimes we do tend to hang on to previous versions of ourselves, um, previous beliefs and previous ideas that we identified ourselves with. And um, when you adopt a more kind of like growth and adaptive kind of mindset and you allow yourself the chance to be wrong about certain things, to feel differently about certain things, to have different preferences and to be able to give up on just certain ideas that you maybe toyed with, that you maybe wanted to try, like certain fashion trends, certain aesthetics, um, certain ideals, how you want your life to work out once you're able to really process it and be like, actually, I don't think this is what I really want or I don't think that this would work out this way, letting go of that and being able to just see where life takes you and to enjoy the process a little bit more has really helped. Even though I have all of these struggles, um, I still feel like my mental health is at the best it's ever been. What do I want to use on my lips? I love this like lip juicy lasting tint from Romance so much. I will show you, it's so beautiful. Like being older doesn't mean that there's no space to experiment with your fashion, with you know your career, with your preferences and your hobbies. I think especially when you get older and especially when you've been doing the work that you've been doing for a couple of years, like it's quite understandable that we'll all kind of have a certain sense of existential crisis and a moment of reflection to be like, hey, is this what I really want? And especially now when I finally feel like the world is opening back up and we're all kind of recovering from the pandemic, like I definitely feel like a very different person from when I entered 2020 and um, now I have different priorities, I have different preferences and uh, I definitely feel more grown it's funny because like when I look back on my old videos, I can definitely see how much growth I've done and how differently I see the world now. We're not done yet. I'm gonna use Supergroup's Resetting Refreshing Mist. It's SPF 40 by the way. So if you've ever wondered how to reapply your sunscreen, if it's not with another Supergroup product, this is like damn old already. This is the Invincible Setting Powder. This seems to work great. It's the Resetting Refreshing Mist, also by Supergoop. And it is like a pepperminty flavor. It's very refreshing. That's what's going on with me. I probably will dig into uh, some of these topics a little bit better. I'm still really excited about beauty, skincare, and everything else. And I'm going to be traveling quite a lot. So you'll be seeing a lot more travel-related content. Um, but yeah, I... Thank you so much for giving me the time to get my groove back and to figure stuff out. Um, talking to you is always nice. <laughs> okay, so that brings me to the end of this chatty get ready with me. Um, sorry if it was all over the place. It's messy, but such is life. I hope you guys are doing well and um, I hope to come back with more chatty get ready with me. Uh, I always enjoy doing these. I always feel better after and um, I hope you guys are well. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it. Um, also subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you guys in my next video, which could be a perfume video. I see your comments. I feel you. I'm really excited too. So yeah, bye.